we have held the Washington Post stock since 1973. Uh, I've never sold a share of Berkshire. Love is love, right? Well, not when it comes to Warren Buffett and McDonald's. Turns out that even the Oracle of Omaha can experience heartbreak. In 2003, Buffett said farewell to his McDonald's shares, leaving a billion-dollar gap in his investment portfolio. So, what went wrong between Wall Street's golden boy and the fast food giant? Was it a lack of ketchup packets or a secret sauce gone bad? Let's get straight into it. So, someone asked a great question about selling, and here's the deal. Warren Buffett and his team aren't big fans of selling stuff. They've had Washington Post stock since way back in 1973, and Buffett hasn't sold any Berkshire shares since he got the first ones in 1962. They've also stuck with Coke stock since 1988, Gillette stock since 1989, and American Express stock since 1991. Now, if they do end up selling something, it's usually because they need the money for something else. But here's the interesting part. In the last 10 to 15 years, they haven't really had that problem. Back in the day, Buffett used to sell things because he found something he liked even more. It wasn't his favorite thing to do, but he didn't want to borrow money. So he would reluctantly sell something he thought was a great deal to buy something even better. That was back when he had more ideas than money. Well, now it's a different story. He's got more money than ideas. So let me break it down for you. Nowadays, when Warren Buffett and his team decide to sell, it's because they've taken a second look at how a business is doing financially. Back when they first invested, they had a certain idea about the company's long-term competitive advantage. However, as time goes by, they might change their minds about it. Now, don't get it twisted. It doesn't mean they believe the company is about to hit rock bottom or anything like that. They still see a bright future for companies like McDonald's and Disney, to name a couple. But here's the catch. They might not see the competitive edge of these companies as strong as they initially thought when they first decided to invest. It could mean they made a mistake in their judgment back then, or it might mean they're mistaken now and the companies are just as strong as ever. For some reason or another, though, they get the feeling that the company's strengths might have taken a bit of a hit. So let's dive into a real-life example to understand how Warren Buffett makes decisions. Back in the day, around 1970, Buffett and his partner Charlie were eyeing the newspaper industry. At that time, they saw it as an incredibly strong business. Fast forward to 2002, and Buffett doesn't view the newspaper industry's position the same way as he did in 1970. He still thinks it's a good business, just not as impregnable as it once seemed. Similarly, the franchise of a network television station in 2002 isn't what it was in 1965, according to Buffett. These beliefs change gradually over time, and Buffett acknowledges they might not be spot on. Now, why does he sell? Well, generally, it's when these beliefs about a business or industry change. If they stumble upon a market where everything is incredibly cheap, they might sell some holdings to buy something even cheaper. But that's not the case right now. Buffett openly admits when he makes a mistake. There was a time he made a call to sell something, and in hindsight, he considered it a mistake. He thought it wasn't a standout investment among the very few businesses they want to own worldwide. This decision, as he puts it, has cost quite a bit, around a billion dollars or more. So let's break down Warren Buffett's thoughts on McDonald's. McDonald's, with its 23,000 locations worldwide, poses an interesting challenge. Buffett thinks it's practically impossible to separate the real estate side of the business from the franchising side now. It's like trying to untangle a messy knot, not something you'd want to tackle. With 23,000 locations all over the world, I think it would be extraordinarily difficult to separate the real estate business out from the franchising business at this point. Selling and leasing back the properties or creating a separate real estate trust with operations in over 100 countries and numerous franchise arrangements? Well, according to Buffett, that sounds like a huge headache-inducing problem. He doesn't see it adding more value. So when he looks at McDonald's, he sees it as a solid business, but one that will likely continue in its current form. It's not like dominant products such as Coca-Cola or Gillette in the food business. 
where people might favor McDonald's but still move around to different places at different times. All right, let's talk about the difference between consumer products. When someone starts using a Gillette Sensor Plus for shaving, Buffett believes they're likely to stick with it. It's like once you find a product that works for you, you don't usually go elsewhere. If you're using a Gillette Sensor Blade today, chances are you'll stick with the next one that comes out, without trying other brands in between. The product works well, it's reasonably priced, and if it's giving you great results, why change? Now, contrast that with the food business. According to Buffett, it's not the same level of certainty as with a single consumer product like Blades. In the world of soft drinks, he uses Coca-Cola as an example, where people tend to stick with it consistently. However, in the food business, many decisions on where to eat are based on convenience. If you're on the road and see a McDonald's, a Burger King, or a Wendy's sign, chances are you'll stop at the one you see, not necessarily the one you always choose. So, in Buffett's view, there's not the same kind of loyalty and inevitability in the food industry as you might find with certain consumer products. Okay, let's talk about why people choose different places to eat. Buffett thinks most folks like to mix it up. You know, try different places as they move through the week, month, or year. It's not the same as their soft drink habits. People don't feel the need to stick to one particular soft drink all the time. It's just a different ball game. Now, this isn't a criticism of McDonald's. It's just the nature of the food industry they're in. Here's an interesting take from Buffett. He once mentioned at a university that he believed McDonald's was a better educator than the university itself. What he meant was that McDonald's often hires people who might be struggling at the beginning of their working careers. Through the job, they learned valuable skills like punctuality and discipline. Many of these individuals go on to higher positions in their careers, and Buffett sees this as a positive impact of teaching responsibility to those who might otherwise face challenges. So, according to Buffett, we should appreciate the positive employment culture created by McDonald's more than we often do. In conclusion, we've delved into Warren Buffett's insights on investment decisions and the dynamics of businesses, particularly in the context of McDonald's. Buffett emphasizes the importance of understanding the nature of industries when considering investment strategies. He contrasts the predictability of consumer products, exemplified by products like Gillette Blades or Coca-Cola, with the more varied and convenience-driven choices in the food industry. Moreover, Buffett applauds McDonald's not just for its success in the fast food sector, but also for its role as an educator, providing valuable employment opportunities and instilling discipline in those starting their careers. It's a testament to the positive impact businesses can have on individuals' lives beyond their immediate economic success. As we navigate the complex world of investments and businesses, Warren Buffett's approach serves as a valuable lesson to adapt, learn, and recognize the broader impact of businesses on society. Whether contemplating investment decisions or appreciating the cultural influence of corporations like McDonald's, there's always more to uncover in the wisdom shared by one of the most successful investors of our time.